Ah, uh, where are all the sellers? Inventory did not rebound like it normally does the week after the 4th of July. Has the inventory peak for 2023 come and gone? Man, I hope that's not the case. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update. And let's talk about what the National Association of Realtors calls the number one danger to the real estate industry. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. A recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, I've sold more than a thousand folks. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I'm here to help. No video last week because it's always a dead market leading up to the 4th of July holiday. Very few people want to list their house that week with even fewer sticking around to view houses. To say the least, it's a popular time to go on vacation, and I was on one. And with the 4th of July falling on a Tuesday, it kind of threw this week off a little bit. But there was still some activity out there. We listed a house and ended up receiving five offers on it. Well, six, but one was a joke because it was more than 3% below asking price. And for the record, the property went well above the asking price, which was really great news. But here is what amazed me. I'm surprised that only two offers had appraisal gap coverage. If you're a buyer putting more than 10% down and aren't offering appraisal gap coverage, then you are doing something wrong. If you hadn't been advised to do this or even been told about it, then you need to find new representation. But now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,699 houses on the market. That was not the bump that I was looking for after the 4th of July holiday. That was a limp, if anything. So we went from 4,000 units at the end of June down to 3,500 units for the 4th of July holiday week and then only a 200 unit build. This is worrisome. We only have a couple more weeks left of our traditional spring market. This is setting up the fall market to be a miserable one for buyers. Higher interest rates and even fewer availability of homes to look at. This chart really illustrates how the inventory conditions just continue to get worse when compared to a year over year analysis. We now have 1,617 fewer homes on the market than the same time in 2022, and now 491 fewer than we did in 2021, which was the record law for inventory levels, until now, of course. From this chart, you can see what I was talking about in regards to only having a few more weeks of inventory build for the remainder of the spring market. Then we will traditionally see inventory draw down a little bit during the summer to have a big drop during Labor Day weekend. And at that point, we'll have a month or so where inventory builds, then should start seeing inventory decrease as we go deeper into the fall market. Couple this with a climate where we will most likely see increasing interest rates. And this is why I'm saying that if you are a fall buyer, you may want to start looking sooner rather than later as the better market will be earlier in the fall. This week, we listed 833 houses. The four weeks before 4th of July were averaging 1,198 units per week. This 833 number is a far cry from the nearly 1,200 units we were getting used to seeing. But here is where the sticker shock comes to play, if you will. The same week last year, we listed 1,464 single-family homes. This means that new listings in 2023 were off by an astounding 43.1%. We expected listing inventory to be down over the 4th of July week, but I don't think anyone expected for new listings to be down by nearly half in what should have been a rebound week. We had 691 homes go under agreement this week, and that all makes sense because this is really the activity from the week of the 4th of July. So I'd expect this to be down a little bit. The four-week rolling average before the 4th was 1,074 units, so we were pretty far off that number. But again, this was all to be expected but we were a little farther off the week over week comparison than I would have really expected. We put 976 houses under agreement during the same week in 2022. That means our under agreement activity was off by 29.2%. I'm not worried right now, but if this continues, then I may start becoming a little bit more worried. But all in all, even with the weird week, the imbalance, it continues. New listings were down by 43%, while under agreements were down by 29%. Even during this week, where so many buyers are on vacation, buyer demand outstripped seller supply. There were 506 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $823,000 and that median sales price of $650,000. On Saturday, we're going to premiere our July market report where we're going to talk about what happened in June. Be ready for some surprises, especially in the multifamily market. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. 
With the closer that you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory fell to 1.43 months compared to last week's 1.47 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, that would be a true pleasure to help. And now onto the condo market. We have 2,167 condos on the market as of Monday. Again, we expected inventory to go down over the 4th, which it did but it only had an 80 unit bounce back. Chalk this up to another surprise for this week. The trend of inventory levels is getting worse, a lot worse when compared to last year. We now have 569 fewer condos on the market today than we did today last year. The low inventory in all three market segments, it just continues to astound me. There were 378 condos that came on the market this week. The four week rolling average before the 4th of July is 535 units. So we were off that number, but as I said earlier, 100% to be expected. But we were 35.3% off the year-over-year -year new listing data when 584 condos came on the market. Just like the single-family market, the condo market was far off. Not as far off as the single-family market, but it was still considerably off. There were 276 condos that went under agreement this week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 447 units, so we were off there well, we were way off, and again, that was to be expected. And this week, last year, there were 365 condos that went under agreement. This means that year over year, the level of sales were down by 24.4%. Demand, it's outstripping supply. And this has been a big trend in the condo market for the last three or four weeks. So inventory was down by 35% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 24%. Another week of a strong imbalance, something that we got to continue to keep our eye on. There were 238 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $744,000 and that median sales price of $545,000. Months of inventory, it decreased to 1.74 months from last week's 1.77 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? As it helps with the YouTube algorithm, those YouTube gods. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. It hasn't been a good two weeks for interest rates. They stopped moving sideways. And I miss sideways. Interest rates start into March upwards. They pulled back on Monday, but that is going to end up being some just temporary relief. I did a video last week that talks about where I think interest rates are going to be this fall and why. If the interest rate story really interests you, then you really need to check that video out. But we do have a market mover coming up this week. The consumer price index numbers, if it comes in high or low, could move rates. Then we have the producer price index, which could move markets even more. We have a couple Fed president speeches this week, but I don't see them telling us what we don't, quite frankly, already know. So let's talk about the National Association of Realtors and see what the biggest threat in the industry is. It's kind of crazy, and one is a consumer you should really be aware of. Because if an association, which makes their bread and butter off a high agent count, is saying that there are too many agents, then that really says something. First, let's start with the new study from the Consumer Federation of America, which is a nonprofit watchdog group. They say there are, quote, too many real estate agents for too few home sales. Ultimately, there are one and a half million agents in the United States for roughly five to six million home sales in 2023. That means the average agent on the high end will sell four houses this year. That's nuts. So why does this all matter to you as the consumer? It's creating an industry of their words, not mine, marginal agents. The watchdog group notes that industry experts have noted the surfeit of agents creates economic inefficiencies, deprives full-time agents of needed income, frustrates both consumers and experienced agents who must deal with inexperienced agents, forces agents to spend inordinate time and money acquiring new customers, reinforces relatively high and uniform commission rates, and damages the reputation of the industry. And the National Association of Realtors also listed as the number one danger to the industry as masses of marginal agents that will destroy reputation. The NAR continues in saying that the real estate industry is saddled with a large number of part-time, untrained, unethical, and or incompetent agents. This knowledge gap threatens the credibility of the industry. So why does all this matter? Because who you choose to work with? Well, it matters. You need to interview your agent. Ask them how many years they've been selling real estate. And most importantly, how many houses have they sold in their career? And in the last 12 months. That one's really important. The real estate market is a tough one. One of the worst that I've ever seen for us agents. 
And that goes back to the time period of 2008. You want to make sure an agent is in solid financial footing. Otherwise, they could be putting their needs for a commission check before yours. And that means they won't be fighting for you to get you the best value and may just mean they step into that unethical real estate practices arena. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you are looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill your information, and then I'm going to reach out to you, or you can go down below and all of our contact information is there. Questions or comments about any of the market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.